Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 17, Lecture 1. There are three categories of periodontitis, chronic, aggressive, and other forms. This chapter covers the other forms. Some of them we have already covered, so I will move quickly through these. The less common forms are periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic disease, necrotizing periodontal diseases, and developmental or acquired deformities and conditions. Periodontitis associated with system systemic disease. There are a number of systemic diseases or conditions that are contributing factors in periodontitis such as those associated with hematological disorders or those associated with genetic disorders. Those associated with hematologic disorders show abnormalities in the structure or function of the blood and blood forming tissues such as red cells, white cells, platelets, or clotting factors. The disorders that affect the periodontium are acquired neutropenia, which shows an abnormally low level of neutrophils, leukemia, which exhibits an abnormal white blood cells that do not function properly, AIDS or HIV infection, and numerous other rare blood disorders. Here is an image of a hemorrhagic periodontitis associated with blood disorder. Here is an image of periodontitis associated with PMN deficiency. The primary dentition is being lost and the permanent dentition is being exfoliated as soon as the permanent teeth erupt. This is an image of periodontitis associated with leukemia. Here's another image. Periodontitis associated with HIV infection. The two most common are linear gingival erythema, or LGE, and necrotizing periodontal diseases, NPD. LGE is a gingival manifestation of the immunosuppression accompanied with HIV. The clinical appearance is a distinct linear red band that is limited to the free gingiva. It does not respond well to improved self-care or periodontal instrumentation. Here is an image of LGE. Palatal candidiasis in an HIV patient is demonstrated in this image. Since they are immunosuppressed, they are more likely to have candida infections. Genetic disorder with periodontal manifestations. A disease caused by the absence of a gene or by the products of a defective gene. Genetic disorders are passed from one generation to the next but do not necessarily appear in each generation. That is the difference between a genotype and a phenotype in genetics. Examples of genetic disorders are familial and cyclic neutropenia, which is an abnormally no low neutrophil count, Down syndrome, which we went over before, and leukocyte adhesion deficiency syndromes, which exhibit defective leukocyte chemotaxis. Examples of genetic disorders are Papillon-Lefebvre, which shows hyperkeratosis of the palms of the hands and soles of the feet, as well as severe periodontal destruction, and Chediac Higashi syndrome, which is impairment of neutrophil chemotaxis. These may be on your board, so keep them in mind. Here is an example of periodontitis associated with Down syndrome. Developmental or acquired deformities or conditions. Tooth related factors. Tooth anatomic factors that predispose periodontitis include cervical enamel projections, enamel pearls, palatolingual grooves, and tooth malalignment. Here is an enamel pearl, which we have discussed before. 
This image shows a palatolingual groove on a maxillary lateral incisor. Mucogingival deformities and conditions. A mucogingival deformity is a significant alteration of the morphology, morphology or shape size and interrelationships between the gingiva and alveolar mucosa. Recession of the gingival margin is the most common example. Here is an image showing recession of the gingival margin. Here's another image showing gingival recession. The tension of the frenum, as you see here, is pulling on the gingival margin, causing recession. Here is another frenum pulling on the gingival margin. You need to be sure to check for these when you are doing your intraoral examinations. A recap of the less common forms. A number of systemic diseases or conditions are contributing factors in periodontitis. These include those associated with hematological disorders or those associated with genetic disorders. Tooth anatomical factors include cervical enamel projections, enamel pearls, palatolingual grooves, and tooth malalignment. Necrotizing periodontal diseases are inflammatory, destructive infections of periodontal tissues that involve tissue necrosis, basically localized tissue death. They include necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, or NUG, and necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis, or NUP. There is insufficient evidence to establish if NUG and NUP are two unique diseases or different stages of the same disease. Keep that in mind. Alternate terminology. Necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis has also been known as trench mouth because it occurred in soldiers during World War I where most of the action happened in trenches. It was also known as Vincent infection or Vincent's angina named after the French doctor who identified it. It was also known as acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis or ANUG and necrotizing ulcerative gingival stomatitis. Necrotizing periodontal disease appears to be related to diminished systemic resistance to bacterial infection. The clinical appearance is noticeably different than that of any other periodontal disease. The oral signs of necrotizing periodontal diseases is painful infection primarily involving the interdental and marginal gingiva. It is characterized by ulcerated and necrotic papilla and marginal gingiva. It gives the appearance that the papilla and gingival margins have been punched out or cratered. There's materia alba, plaque biofilms, sloughed tissue, blood, and stagnant saliva present. The patient may excessively salivate, and you will see a pseudomembrane, which is a gray layer of tissue that covers the necrotic areas of the gingiva. One of the most obvious signs is the fetid breath, or horrible bad breath, that you will never forget once you experience it. Here is an image of the ulcerated and necrotic papilla and marginal gingiva. You can see the purulent exudate around the necrotic tissue. Here's another image of necrotic papilla. Necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis shows tissue necrosis, which is limited to gingival tissues. It's a painful infection, primarily of the interdental and marginal gingiva, characterized by interdental papilla loss, gingival bleeding, and pain. Necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis 
has the, the same appearance except that it involves the PDL and alveolar bone loss. It can produce loss of attachment within days. Additional characteristics of NUP. There is rapid gingival recession, rapid irregular bone loss, delayed healing, and spread of infection can go to the oral mucosa. Here are some images of NUP. There's also fever, malaise, and lymphadenopathy or swollen lymph nodes accompanying NUG and NUP. They are collectively called necrotizing periodontal disease because there is no evidence that they are separate diseases. And NUG may be an early stage of NUP. Both reflect diminished systemic resistance to bacterial infection. These species of microorganism which have been associated with necrotizing periodontal diseases include the Treponema species, Selenomonas species, Fusobacterium species, and B. melaninogenicus SS intermedius, formerly known as Prevotella intermedia. They should have left that name alone. Predisposing factors for MPD are systemic diseases which impair immunity, poor oral self-care, emotional stress, inadequate sleep or fatigue, and alcohol consumption. Caucasians are more likely to get NPD. Cigarette smoking is also a factor, and the poor eating habits of young adults, especially college students, can be a contributing factor due to poor nutrition and low protein intake. Smoking. Most patients who experience NPD are smokers. NPD can occur at any age. The reported mean age in industrialized countries is between 22 and 24 years of age. Patient education. Instruction on proper nutrition and fluid intake. Smoking cessation. A liquid dietary replacement such as Ensure or Boost can be recommended since eating is difficult due to pain. NPDs are inflammatory, destructive infections of periodontal tissues that involve tissue necrosis or localized tissue death. There is insufficient evidence to establish if NUG and NUP are two unique diseases or different stages of the same disease. The clinical appearance of NPD is noticeably different than that of any other periodontal disease. It is a painful infection, primarily involving the interdental and marginal gingiva. It's characterized by ulcerated and necrotic papilla and marginal gingiva. Gives the appearance of that the papilla and gingival margins have been punched out or cratered. The pseudomembrane or gray layer of tissue that covers the necrotic areas of the gingiva is a telltale feature as well as the fetid breath, which is not mentioned here. This concludes Perio Chapter 17, Lecture 1.